to helen by edgar allan poe structure summary analysis hello and welcome to the discourse to helen is a poem written by edgar allan poe that was first published in 1831 poe continued to edit and revise the poem and it was published in its final structure in poe's 1845 poetry collection titled the raven and other poems In the poem Poe refers to the beauty of Helen of Troy while talking about Jane Stannard the mother of one of his childhood friends Poe mentioned that he was infatuated by Jane and she was one of the first dependable older female presences in his young life The central theme of the poem is the beauty of a woman Jane Stannard in Poe's case Poe compares the woman with Helen of Troy and compares the beauty of Helen with various other mythological figures In 1952, Hilda Doolittle, better known as H.D., published her poem Helen, in which she offered a response to Poe's poem to Helen, while raising the issue of objectification of women and misogyny. Structure of To Helen. To Helen is a short poem consisting of 15 lines set in three stanzas of five lines each. Each stanza follows a different rhyming scheme. The first stanza is set in rhyme scheme A B A B B. The second stanza follows C D C D C and the third follows E F F E F. In addition, Poe used assonance and consonance to offer slant rhymes within the stanzas. Poe wrote the poem in iambic pentameter. Each line is made up of five sets of two beats. The first of these is unstressed and the second is stressed. Poe used metaphor and jambment, alliteration, personification and simile and there are many allusions in the poem. Poe continues to use simile throughout the poem and thus it can be said as an example of epic or homeric simile. Summary of To Helen Stanza 1 Helen thy beauty is to me like those Nicean barks of yore that gently o'er a perfumed sea the weary wayworn wanderer bore to his own native shore. The poet begins with a metaphor as he addresses Helen and mentions how he feels about her beauty. The poet basically refers to some lady he knows well while addressing her as Helen suggesting that the lady he wishes to talk to is as beautiful as Helen of Troy the most beautiful woman in the classical Greek world It is believed that Poe dedicated this poem to Jane Stannard the mother of one of his close friends He compares the lady's beauty with the ships of Nicaea in the old times Nicaea was an important ancient port of the Greek empire The poet says that her beauty offers the same relief that a tired wanderer would feel when a strong and gentle ship takes him away from the struggles to the security of a native place. Poe begins with a simile, Helen, thy beauty is to me like those Nicaean barks of yore. Poe uses a syncope in the third line or or over and alliteration in the fourth, wave on wanderer. Poe used an allusion to Odysseus and the tired wanderer who returned to his home from Nicaea another allusion is Catullus a greek poet who once traveled from Nicaea where flowers and fruit trees were in bloom the seas would seem perfumed as a result of the odors coming from those trees stanza 2 on desperate seas long wont to roam thy hyacinth here thy classic face thy naiad hairs have brought me home to the glory that was greece and the grandeur that was rome The poet continues to praise the beauty of that lady and his tone becomes more romantic. He romanticizes the glory and grandeur of the Greek and Roman eras and compares them with the beauty of the lady who he refers to as Helen of Troy. Wont is an obsolete word now which meant used to or accustomed to in the past. The poet says that the seas are desperate, rough and dangerous and the wanderer has little hope to reach the native shore safely. Her beauty guides the poet who is the wanderer now and brings him home through the rough roaming seas. The poet means that he was lost before he met the lady whom he refers to as Helen. The poet compares the hair of the lady with bunchy hyacinth flowers of probably reddish orange color. Poe again uses alliteration hyacinth hair. Poe compares the lady with Naiad, a mythical figure that lives near the seas, a nymph representing beauty and magic. Stanza 3. Lo, in your brilliant window niche, how statue-like I see thee stand, the agate lamp 
within thy hand a psyche from the regions of which are holy land the poet begins with an exclamation as he sees the lady standing near a spacious circular bright window window niche he exclaims that the lady is looking astonishing as he sees her standing near the window niche like an artful statue as she is not moving she appears to the poet like a work of art he appreciates her physical attributes that appear proportionate perfectly crafted and just totally hot po uses simile again statue like the lady is standing still with an agate lamp in her hand an agate lamp is a kind of stone through which light is reflected the poet suggests that the lady embodies light and warmth providing him with a destination to aim for the poet then compares the lady with psyche psyche is a mortal myth- mythical figure in greek mythology psyche was the most beautiful mortal woman in the world she was so beautiful that people began ignoring venus the goddess of beauty thus venus got jealous of her beauty and told her son cupid to shoot an arrow at psyche and make her fall in love with the bull cupid followed his mother's order but when he saw to shoot at her he found her so astonishingly beautiful that he got distracted and accidentally got poked by one of his own arrows and fell in love with psyche the poet compares himself with cupid later on psyche herself got rid of the mortal world and became a goddess the poet says that the lady helen psyche jane stannard has arrived from the holy land the place of the goddess so this is it for today we will continue to discuss the history of american english literature please stay connected with the discourse thanks and regards